Hello everyone, it's Andy Glenn here, welcoming you all to another Sharks TV podcast. And today I'm joined by Sharks assistant coach, Jamie Thompson. Jamie, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Andy. It's been a while. It has, it has. Congratulations on re-signing for yet another season with the Sharks. Yeah, uh, I think this is my 10th year. Like, is it? Maybe not 10th season, but definitely 10th year, I think. So uh, it's been a while. Yeah, I've had a good break this summer. And Let me guess, you've been playing golf. We have played a lot of golf. <laughs> yeah, we've played a lot of golf uh, and just chilled and stayed away from ice rinks and uh, just kind of got our head round last season and and what lay ahead and what we were going to what I was going to do personally and and then and then uh, now we're ready to go. Well, when you say that you were taking time to decide what you were going to do personally, <laughs> is that? Perhaps because Bailey's made the squad this this season, or is there a th- bigger there's, picture? There's a touch of that, Andy. I think um, um, last season was pretty brutal, coming to an end the way it did. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I, I'm over, you know. I think the standard of hockey was was fantastic, but then also the commitment level, uh, the length of time I've been involved, um, and then with Bailey coming through. Um, I've never coached him. I've never been involved in anything he's done. I've let, I made him make his own way all the way right through the ranks, and uh, and um, I just wanted to see where he was going to fit in to the plan before I committed. Because um, you know, um, again, I'll, I'll I'll continue on the path of letting him make it on his own. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that's important. I, I've always said that that's what we were going to do, and I'll stick by that. So. Um, I'm back for a year. Uh, how long after that? Who knows? We'll, we'll we'll stick to the plan and see what happens with the with the boy. But um, but for now, yeah, we're 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 both here, and I'm de- I'm delighted for him actually. Well, we're delighted to get back for another year. It wouldn't be the same without without you and Martin on the the bench. The two old stooges. <laughs> well, I was going to say good cop and bad cop, but it's it's bad cop and worse cop, really, isn't it? I think we flipped roles last year. Like Martin turned into the bad guy and. Uh, <laughs> And I turned into the good guy, seemingly, but uh, I don't know how that happened halfway through. That was his version of it. Like, I wasn't aware that we had swapped. But. <laughs> um, you have taken time to reflect on last year. Um, what was your thoughts? Um, I've obviously watched the rest of the guys, and, and I'd probably echo what they say. Um, bitterly disappointing in the end, but on reflection, um, not too bad, you know. Um, I still think that had we had another two or three weeks extra pre- preparation yeah. at the start, we would have been in the playoffs. I still think the team was good enough. I still think the team was strong enough. Um, a lot of those one goal losses, you know, we we we, we turn around not half of them, but ten percent of them were in the playoffs. So there's loads of positives and angles to look at it. Um, so overall, I think we acquitted ourselves very well. Um, we've certainly made an impact in the town. We've certainly made an impact in the league. Yeah. Um, and I think for our first season, uh, you know, overall, uh, it was very successful. Yeah. I mean, I think you're talking about some of those one-goal losses. If you look at them even further at the individual games, a lot of them were at the start where it was just it was penalties that, that killed. We didn't deal with the, the PK particularly well at the start. We learned how to deal with it, but that was we, that's how we got beat in a couple of games. I think... Um, uh, well, you've, the, another flip of that coin, Andy, is it's the fact we were taking them was we, we just weren't equipped to deal with the speed ah. increase in it early on. We hadn't got to grips with it yet, and that's that's why we were taking them a little, you know, a few trips here and there, and you know, a couple of months down the line, we weren't taking them once we got used to it and, and the tempo. Um, so I, it was a, a learning lesson, you know, and we, we left it a bit late to to push on, but. Um, it is what it is now. It's dead in the water, and as always, we just look forward and 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 look ahead. Yeah, I was having a look through the stats the other night again. We lost the first seven, and we lost the last five as well. Yeah. Um and th- that was the bit that we kind of felt that we little bit of letdown, and that was probably the only downside in the season. We can understand the bit at the start, just finding our feet, and then that great run over Christmas time. It, everything it was just. Everybody was so happy then. You remember it? I remember it well. Yeah, I mean, look, the last five games, we, well, no going into details, but there was numerous players playing hurt. Yeah, you know, a couple of players playing with, with injuries. They shouldn't have been anywhere near the game, really. If they wanted, we all they all dug in and did their best, and we come up a wee bit short. But um, that is what it is. Uh, but certainly, the start didn't do us any any favors. 
Uh, and actually, if you look at the fixtures, the games at the start, the teams we probably would have turned over, yeah. in my opinion, later 100%. in the season had we met. Yeah. They probably done, they probably won 100%. a watch playing us early. Um, but again, look, it's dead in the water now. It is what it is. Um, yeah, move on to next season. Move on, yeah. And it's not going to be long before we play our first game at home. Yeah. It's only against the reigning champs. Well, well, well <laughs> I mean, we've got some pre-season games before we play them. Ah, I know, but, but... but I'm looking at the start of the season and I'm like, I hope we didn't start the same way we started last time. <laughs> All right, let's just play Leeds, who look incredible on, on paper. I know you're going to say the game's not played on paper, it's played on ice. But then Leeds and then uh, Telford away, the only team that we didn't uh, beat yeah. Um, last season that'll change tell me tell me we're going to get at least two points at those first two games I'm I'm confident of that uh, look, Le- Leeds are stacked again hugely yeah. experienced team uh, I see they've pulled in a couple of they've got Bissonnette as well signed Aye, for them look, it is what it is you know Bissonnette was in the it was in the league before you know, he's a great good yeah. player but he's not any stronger than what they had in my opinion so he doesn't make them any yeah, better Wikowski Wikowski was you know? good wasn't he Aye, so um you know, they've got a lot of firepower. I see they've brought in a couple of... Well, they've got a couple of extra imports, really, and the guy, these brief classified players that they've got. Yep. So, you know, they're absolutely stacked. But, and they're, they're quite rightly so. They're champions for a reason. They've put a, an excellent team together. But you got to look at their budget and look at the bums on seats they get. And, and you know, we'll sneak a couple We'll sneak a couple of points off them at some point, like we always do. And, and um, it, was great. it was great playing them here. It was just oh, great. Right. Oh, it was just a highlight. Uh, it was just super stuff, wasn't it? Now you got to pick your battles. You know, scalping those big ones, the big teams. Uh, you know, when you do it, it feels amazing. Um, and obviously, it's just an added bonus. We really need to knuckle down this year and pick our battles. Know who you know. We really need to be put into bed and deal with them. And when we when we take the points off the big guys at whatever time when it comes, that it's just an added bonus. It'll be fantastic. You know. Well, I'm going to ask you what you're thinking of our squad. Uh, because at this point, we've probably got about 16 um, players named, with the, the most recent ones being um, Connor Henderson, um, Bailey and uh, Owen Ray. What do you think of the the squad as it looks just now? Well, look, I think our squad last year was good enough. I think, um, well, due respect, our goaltending uh, needed to be improved. We've done that. Um, but on paper, I think we proved we can mix and... I think uh, I still think it's good enough. Uh, I know we have some additions to come in yep. uh, that are need done. Uh, I know we're listen. We're working hard every day. All you know, all five, six of us are 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 talking to players and try to push people in the right direction. But as you know, the right player will come along f- for us at some point that will just knit us back together, and we're not going to panic and 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 fill it because we believe that the squad we've already got is strong enough to compete. So. We're not going out there and panicking uh, and and dragging in. I seen somewhere when one supporter would say that we need five or six new bodies. We didn't need five or six new bodies. None of us in the management team believe that. If we can add a player in that's going to make us better overall, of course, John backs us a hundred percent to to try and make that happen, and it will at some point. Um, but I think we're all very happy with the the fact that we've got most of the boys back. We're certainly happy with the guys that are still to be announced. Um, and I think we'll be competitive. What are you looking forward to most about next season? Well, I, I think personally, seeing my boy pull the, the yeah, jersey on is obviously a, a massive thing. I've, him and Kyle playing together for the team that um, me and uh, Kyle's dad and my brother all played for, you know, our yeah. team. We've sung that song a million times, Andy, you yeah. know it. Uh, on a personal level, um, that'll be really nice to see. It'll be good for everybody to see because we know how much the, this club is in in your family. Nah, it's in our blood, you know. Yep. Um, so that'd be good. Um, but I think as a as a team and a business head on, um, I'm really looking forward to see us hit the ground running. Uh, you know, second year pros, second year full time in the league. Uh, no excuses now. Uh, we've got a lot of boys that uh, that have got a point to prove and they need to come out the gate fast. And I think they will. And I'll be I'll be really pleased when they do. Yeah, as you say, no excuses. They should be in the gym all summer, getting themselves super yeah. fit. Yeah. Um, right, I need to ask you a really difficult question now. Go on. Right, it's the same question I asked Bailey in his interview <laughs> with me the other the other day. There, careful. Man. At sixteen, mm-hmm. take yourself back. I know it's a long time. Take yourself back. Yeah. Who was a better player, you or Bailey? My brother. 
Oh, diplomatic <laughs> answer. Diplomatic answer. Uh, no, uh, 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 Bailey. No, he's more skillful than me. He's faster than me. Totally different player to me. I was a very physical player. Still scored a lot of goals when I was a kid and a junior, like like he did. But uh, aye, the skill level that both him and Kyle have got supersedes anything that the three of us have got. So uh, if they have as good a career as, as what we managed to have, uh, well, hopefully maybe a wee bit better uh, than some of us, then uh, we'll be all very happy with that. But uh, what did he say? Have you not watched these? Have you not watched no, these? Yeah, uh, no. thing? Because we're recording this straight <laughs> after. No, he said Bailey as well. Uh, modest. He said you took more penalties than him. That's also true. It yeah. was not. It was not. A lot. I tell you, the thing is, though, um, us Sharks fans will take great pleasure in watching the youngsters develop. We've always enjoyed watching young players develop and play and just be the superstars that 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 they are. As much as you'll enjoy watching your your son go on and develop, well, uh, but, but it's great to see. It's great to see, and and you know, all names aside, him and Owen coming through this year. Uh, there's a couple more in the pipeline, you know, that are that are only that far off it as well. But uh, Owen Ray is a fantastic young D man, right up mine and Martin Street. So block shots for fun, even at the age of sixteen, he's just coming seventeen, the same as Bailey. Yeah. Takes the body, plays hard, makes a really good first pass. He's you know so level headed and a great great kid. Uh, you know, obviously we've known him since he was. You know, in diapers, you yeah. know, skating about here, same as Bailey and. Um, Bailey's the same, very skillful, you know, uh, not the busiest a player about the ice, but finds little pockets of the ice to play in and seems to get himself into space. And um, I, I will say about him is, uh, you know, he, he, he tends to, I believe that he, he tends to make people round about him play better. He's a very good passer of the puck and sets people up. So if we keep developing them, I mean, these boys have been on the ice with us now. It's not a new thing. They've trained with this squad now for two, maybe three years since they were 14 and 15. So this is a uh, this is them starting to get the reward for all their hard work and their dedication, and uh, it's fantastic to see. Uh, regardless of who it is, yeah, it's not an accident that the Sharks keep producing. You know, you you look even through the current squad, all these players are generally a lot of them are local to Dumfries. Yep. It doesn't happen by accident. A lot of it's down to the work that the junior Sharks do. And your wife's obviously heavily involved yep, in 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 that. And uh, we need to get her on the podcast soon. She keeps saying she's going to come on, but don't, never you'll, don't, comes you'll stick on. Stick to your time. <laughs> she's I, but I think I think that's the thing. There's a lot of dedication in, uh, in mm-hmm. hockey in Dumfries, and these players coming through are continuous. And there is a real pathway for players. I mean, you look at people that are coming along to do learn to skate just now. In 10, 15 years' time, they'll be they'll be they'll be icing for the shots, won't they? Well, quite possibly if they put the work in and they've got you've got the talent and. The, um, I think the Solway Junior Club and we've over we've overperformed for such a small club. We, you know, Leanne and the team have, have done a great job growing uh, the popularity of the sport now. Um, but it's still relatively quite a small club compared to some areas with the catchment and all the rest yeah. of it. You know, and and we see it year in year out. We have numerous kids playing at numerous age groups for Scotland. Uh, we, we every year we have Great Britain internationals in the junior team and. So Bailey Owen, Logan, uh, Reed, yep. Kyle, and Big Kean have just been in Sheffield this week at the Great Britain camps trialing. Mm. You know, for such a small place, um, I think it's testament to the to the work of the the junior coaches, the the, the parents travelling them up and mm-hmm. down, and also the the hard work and commitment to the players. They they put a shift in and yeah. they, they love it. I suppose if you don't love it, there's no point in doing it. And the facilities that we've got here as well that are used are totally maximised. But I've said it for, for countless times. It's the best. Yeah, I've been in them all, it's, it's, and I've worked in them all with, with with Great Britain now with Scotland stuff. It's it's the best. It's by far the most flexible facility in terms of helping people get on the ice and and helping events run and things like that. And um, we're very very lucky to have it. You still still doing national stuff as well? Yeah. So uh, I'm still a director of Hockey UK. Um, I sit on the GB Performance Committee there um, and um, I'm still the head of hockey operations for SIH. Uh, I'll be stepping away from SIH this year before January the 1st. Uh, they've actually split my role. Well, we say they, we've split my role into three. Um, we're going to take three people on to right. take over what I've been doing in the past so I can step away from that. 
Uh, that's ten years service I've gave to that, so that's more than enough. I think I've you know I've left a mark there, so that's good. Uh, and I'll keep the ice hockey UK stuff on for the foreseeable. Um, it's not a huge commitment. I'm really interested in forging that pathway and keeping more kids in the country instead of sending them away to America and you know making that improving our base here to allow that to happen. Um, so there's a lot of work there to be done over the next couple of years to keep me busy. But yeah, still involved with that now. And that's why I mean, we joked at the start about you taking a, uh, you know, doing the doing the golf in the the summer. But you, you do need a break from hockey well, because I, you're involved in so much of it, aren't you? Well, every, everybody, you know, I get to June and uh, June July. I don't really answer the phone to anybody about hockey. I just switch it off completely. Leanne Moon was well, actually we're well past the morning stage. I play golf every night after work. And then uh, we come back in here at the end of July and we get back to business. But to be fair, I still speak to Martin every day, <laughs> you know, about sharp stuff. But uh, but that's it. Um, but uh, you need a break. It's a, it's a long old year. Yeah, see, you say you don't do anything in the summer about, about hockey, but alumni game, what's going on with that? Aye, so alumni game, this is, uh, is this the fourth or fifth fourth, year? Fourth, Aye. I think. Um it's then is it the eighth and ninth or ninth and tenth August? I can't remember. I'll keep you the dates. I don't know. I'm looking up. at you because you're on Friday the ninth August. I think it's the golf. That's day the golf. And then the Saturday directly after that will be the charity game. A really good turnout again this year. Um, there's close to forty five guys playing the game on the Saturday. Uh, Duncan Spears, Johnny McBean's coming down. Uh, for the fans that would know recently. And a few old boys, John Churchill, Mark Gallagher, like the old Swalt, like the, the guys who never miss it, really. Um, so I am really looking forward to that. It's a lot of work. I think this might be the last one for a year or so because we're planning a really big one um, right. for the 10th anniversary of, a, on a, of an event that affect, affected us all kind of thing, a yeah. really big charity thing. And there's a bit of work involved in that. So to get everybody here, like I mean everybody, Oh, the it's a lot of time, a lot of time, folk to save up to get themselves Correct, over to Dunfrey. So this, this might be that might be the last one for two years, possibly not. But uh, it's it's looking good. Um, John and the team are going to start posting on social media about it next week as well for me, That's um, right. and get our charity partners out there, um, and see if we can we can raise some money for them and have what a charity good time. is it this year? Well, we've got two, so we still always stick with with DG Prostate Buddies. Yeah, that's, prostate buddies. that's a local uh, charity here. Um, and I'm looking at a, a men's mental health charity as well. Cool. Uh, there's a couple that are in the running right, right now. I'm talking to both of them. Just after a few things that happened this year, I thought that was maybe important. It would be a nice wee touch to add that in there. So we'll we'll release that when that's been finalised and put that out. So, But I, I'm looking forward to it. It's good to see everybody. I'm not playing the game this year. I'm, I've, whoa, I'm whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind, <laughs> rewind. <laughs> you can't organise the alumni game and then no play that. Oh, no, you can't. No, right, so. no, well, no, Ma Martin it. says he's in the kit, so if he's not playing, I'm not Martin playing, always so. says that and then always plays. Aye. And uh, and his, in the last game, if you remember, he came on the ice. I sat eating biscuits in the penalty no, did, box. What he did was he filled, <laughs> he filled somebody within the first 10 seconds, then went in the penalty box and claimed he'd done a two-minute shift. Aye, that's true. Aye, <laughs> that's true. Well, we'll see, at this minute in time, I'm not. I've, I've actually I've managed to lose a couple of stone over the past couple of months, so maybe if I can get, go. get half in shape, I, I might get 30 seconds. I know you don't like to play with... With your glasses on as well. I can't you know, see them. Can't see them without them. <laughs> can't don't want to play with them. Oh dear. Aye. But um, you must have raised a few quid over the years for a charity. Uh, Any uh, idea uh, if you totaled it up? Yeah, about four and a half grand, I think. Superb, superb, yeah. and a good and a good night out for everybody, really, as well, isn't it's it? Usually two really good nights out back to back, which is a bit of a battle, but uh, we get through it. And as as you know, as we'll never give up. Yeah. You know? Fantastic, fantastic. Um, Anything else that we want to chat about before we, we head off? I'll uh, give, give, give sure, the reins well, to you. I was, one, I, was quite, I was very disappointed in you, actually, at one point. Come on then, tell you me. You've had Joey on and Martin, and tw that's twice now you've said that Martin was your favourite podcast guy. Where's my favourite podcast guy? You've told me that twice out of there now, so you're playing the, playing the field now. I think, no. oh, oh, I really enjoy talking to you about hockey you're and stuff. And you, you're, only, you're only as good as your last podcast. <laughs> that's what Martin was saying at a game or something no, like that's that. That's very true. Um, I, to be fair, I love doing the podcast. I love speaking to the vast majority, if not everybody. I mean, when you, I know when you come into the room and you look at all the cameras and all the rest of it, but most folk tend to relax because it's just me chatting rubbish about hockey. And they're talking to you, you didn't even know they're there. Oh, well, that's very yeah. nice. And uh, <laughs> I do enjoy your, 
your 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 podcasts and your your knowledge. You've probably forgotten more than I'll ever know. I think I've probably forgotten more than I know. I think. Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm just I'm just thinking that how are we going to get that? Maybe we should do a, a kind of public vote for the best podcast. Oh, Joey Coulter will win it, won't he? Well, do you know yeah. the most popular podcast that we've we've had so far? Go on. It's the one with the farm. It's that was gone. Oh, that's cheating, though, isn't it? I mean, that's... Uh, Three and a half thousand people watched that. I watched the uh, comments on YouTube and stuff, and I was absolutely amazed. The Brilliant, people commenting from all over the world is uh, pretty, pretty amazing. Do you know who the most um, popular video for signing this year has been? Uh, Kyle. No. But Kyle, Kyle was up there. Joey He's got Col nearly 900 Joey views. Coulter. No. Jordan Marr got oh, 1,300 views on his. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But he's old man watching them. Probably watching Good number of times. He's saying the person. I think it works like that. I think it works like that. Listen, you know the score here. You've got a message to, to fans over at Jamie Thompson. I think the message is clear. You know, at the end of this, the, the season last year was fantastic. We're getting over 1,000 people uh, beating our our neighbours over the, over the road in the other game and we want to start the season that way so instead of building up to a high let's get behind from weekend one and, and see if we can get up to 2,000 this year that's the that's the game that's what we want Do you think we could get 2,000 fans? Quite easily Brilliant yeah. It'd be good to get it wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be unbelievable Yeah Well let's just take it in steps get 1,500 first yeah. and 2,000 Sharks fans you know what to do you know you need to like share and subscribe to the channel but you also know you need to get your pals your neighbours, all the rest of it, down to watch the most successful team in South West Scotland play the play and do what they do. Jamie, thanks so much Thank you, for Andy. your time today. We appreciate your chat and thanks to everyone who's watched. This is Andy Glenn saying cheerio.